Do you see any kind of mood that Putin might have or where he might, what he might be thinking now, emboldened by the gridlock in Congress over the aid to Ukraine? Two years ago, you and I were here uh, in Munich for the security conference. You interviewed President Zelensky. The United States led and drew its allies uh, forward in a united front against Vladimir Putin. The inability uh, to continue with emphasis uh, that leadership on the part of the United States, the uncertainty that we are bringing only can empower Vladimir Putin, and we have to continue our leadership. Uh, the vice president has spoken here, other senior American officials will. Can they convince a very anxious alliance that the United States rem remains all in as a leader of NATO and as, some, as a nation that's going to continue its traditional and historic role? The short answer is yes. President Biden has spoken so powerfully about this. The vice president just a short while ago uh, put an exclamation point on that. Yes. So you have no doubt? I have no doubt. Regrettably, we're going through a period of uncertainty, but I have optimism that we will come together to meet the imperative. You have just been impeached by the House. It's the first time in 150 years that this has happened to a cabinet secretary. The White House has obviously, you know, called it a, 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 you know, a political disgrace and it was all about politics. The MAGA Republicans who, who wanted to do this say it was the right thing to do because they say you did not perform your duty as, uh, as the secretary over immigration. What is your response? Um, it's what I've said previously, baseless allegations, uh, no basis in fact, no basis in law, and I continue my work. And my work brings me to the Munich Security Conference to meet with public officials from different countries, to meet with private sector leaders, to address the challenges that we in the United States are facing and that are global in nature. And do you think people over here understand when you have these incredibly important uh, discussions on policy and immigration is something that the whole world you know goes through and is having this crisis do they understand or do you feel that your position has been compromised oh not at all not at all they very very well understand the politics of the moment not only in the United States but in their respective countries as well and the leaders with whom I am meeting the great majority uh, of which I have met before they know me they know me, they know the seriousness of my purpose and the fact that I am focused on mission. The politics are an aside. What about immigration? Because the Republicans, the very same Republicans that impeached you, they had insisted that the administration, of which you are cabinet secretary, add a tough immigration bill to any foreign aid bill for Ukraine and, and the other countries. And then they sabotaged that. What's your analysis of that? How, how, you know, how much has that set back the cause of proper immigration reform? So it is um, a matter of unanimity that our system in the United States, our immigration system, is broken. I was very privileged and honored uh, to s uh, sit with a bipartisan group of senators to fashion legislative fixes that are overdue now for decades. Yeah. It is, in fact, what the Republicans insisted upon. The bipartisan group of senators delivered. The question that everyone is asking is, was a solution actually uh, desired, or do people want the problem as a, uh, a tool uh, for politics? And regrettably, what we are seeing now is that the latter seems to carry the day more than the former. And what will that mean actually on the border? You've been down there, the president has been down there. You know, it's such a huge thing, particularly in an election year. What does that mean for actually trying to tackle what even you all admit is, you know, just too many people coming across? Um, what it does is it's a serious constraint on our ability to manage it as it has been for some time. We can only do so much within a broken immigration system, a system that is fundamentally broken. And when we act, our actions, our executive actions are invariably challenged in the courts, depending on what we do. Uh, what we do drives who is litigating, but not whether or not it is litigated. We rely on other countries as well. 
And what's very important to understand is that the challenge that we are confronting is not unique to the United States. No. It is hemispheric and global in spoke, uh, scope. Is it unique to the United States that it just never gets fixed, or are many of your allies facing the same issue? You keep saying it's a fixed, it's a broken immigration system. Why doesn't it get fixed? I think that it is a potentially unique that we haven't been able to do anything legislative since 1996. That's a long time. Yes. And the world has changed, and the dynamics of migration have changed. The demographics of the individuals whom we are encountering at the border are very different than they were 10 years mm -hmm. ago. Um, and so, unfortunately, politics are an impediment uh, to a solution. What other issues are you is to, uh, top of mind for you in your position here? What other major global issues that affect the United States are you going to be discussing with your counterparts? So we are very focused on a number of different types of threats, uh, as well as opportunities. Uppermost in my mind right now is what we are doing with respect to the potential as well as the risks of artificial intelligence yeah. to advance our mission as well as to protect against adverse nation states. I have a very important meeting with my counterpart from the People's Republic of China in Vienna following the Munich Security Conference. And so we have a number of different uh, mission sets within our portfolio that I, that I am addressing with world leaders. Do you feel, because China's obviously, you know, in the bigger picture, America seems to think its biggest threat comes from China. I mean, it's trying to deal with, with Russia and Ukraine. It's trying to deal with an explosive Middle East. But they all say that we need to pivot to China. What do you think your counterpart is going to be thinking in terms of the seriousness of the United States? After all these shenanigans in Congress, after you know questioning aid to Ukraine, I mean they must all be watching very closely. I'm sure they are. The world watches the United States uh, because the United States is a a leader. Um, uh, my counterpart uh, is very uh, focused on some of the challenges that we share, um, and one of them is fentanyl, the scourge of fentanyl that is not exclusive to the United States, mm -hmm. but is predominant in the United States. Um, we want to tackle that challenge, and we want to tackle it together. The president, our President Biden, met with President Xi and really opened up the aperture of a dialogue between the United States and China, and other cabinet members have brought their respective portfolios to the table with their Chinese counterparts, and I am doing the same. And given that this is an election year, not just in the United States, but in many, many countries around the world, do you think that there can be any progress made on the U.S. immigration uh, front or not? Or is it going to wait till after the election? I am an unrelenting optimist, especially when one confronts a legislative imperative. A bipartisan group of senators reached an agreement. I am hoping that that crosses the finish line, and if not in its current form, that modifications are made that don't cause disrepair to really the fundamental uh, principles of it, which is to make that asylum system more workable to meet the dynamics of today. Do you have a personal reaction to what happened in Congress last week, being impeached? I will, I will say this, Christian. Um, um, I don't let it distract me uh, from the work. Uh, would I have preferred that correctness had prevailed? Um, of course so. The fact that it did not does not uh, slow me down in doing the work that um, I'm tasked to do by the President of the United States. I don't know whether you want to or can answer this, but you know, a huge amount of focus on President Biden's age. And I just want to know what you think about that, given what's at stake, essentially. And are you sure and confident that, let's say, I don't know, Congress hauls in the special prosecutor and he, you know, you know, is able to sort of talk more in detail about his questioning of President Biden? Two, two responses. One, the attention's misplaced. I've interacted with the president countless times. Uh, I've said publicly the most difficult part about a meeting with President Biden is preparing for it, because he is probing, exacting, 
and quite detail oriented and focused. Number one. Number two, um, I was a federal prosecutor for 12 years. And so the responsibility of a prosecutor, including a special counsel, is to learn the facts, determine the facts, and apply the law to those facts. That was done, and the conclusion is that no case was there, and therefore the case is closed. Mm -hmm. To make gratuitous personal remarks is inappropriate and is a deviation from the Department of Justice norms. To add the fact that those gratuitous personal remarks were terribly inaccurate only makes it in more inappropriate. Interesting you say that because even the former Republican Speaker of the House said, no, 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 the President is super sharp. That was Kevin McCarthy. Oh, I've been um, before the President and the sharpness of the questioning and the probing into the details is something I know very well. Really interesting. Alejandro Mayorkas, thank you so much. Thank you, Christian.